السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما We start as we always do, first and foremost by praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We show him our utmost gratitude and appreciation for all of the blessings that he's given us. He's given us food, he's given us shelter, he's given us sweaters, he's given us clothes, and he's given us iman, he's given us faith, he's put Islam in our hearts. He's given, he's given us places to pray. And so we thank Allah. Allah, we thank you. Allah, we appreciate you. Allah, we're grateful for all of these blessings. And we praise Allah and compliment Allah. Allah, you are the most beautiful. Allah, you're the most powerful. Allah, you are the most perfect. Oh Allah, you're the most caring and the, you're the one in control. And oh Allah, you are divine. And we ask Allah for help and we ask Allah for guidance. We ask Allah for whatever it is that we need in our life from food to education to guidance to happiness and for His pleasure and for His paradise. And we ask Allah specifically for forgiveness. We say, Allah, I'm sorry. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Allah, I'm seeking your forgiveness. I'm turning back to you in repentance. I messed up. I did things that were wrong. I did things that were incorrect. Allah, please forgive me. And we believe in Allah and we put our trust in Allah. And on this beautiful, special day of Friday, the day that we gather together to worship Allah, to remember Allah, to do the dhikr of Allah, to declare the absolute greatness of Allah, 
we bear witness and we testify that there is absolutely nothing worthy of our worship, of our unquestioned devotion, except the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the perfect, the most powerful, the most amazing, the divine. And Allah in His wisdom, Allah in His care, Allah in His divinity, He told us to live our lives a certain way, He created us, He put us on this planet. And He didn't just leave us to figure it out. He didn't just give us a book and say, read it and you'll get it. He gave us an example, He gave us a role model to show us how to live that lifestyle. And that example, that role model is none other than our beloved Prophet, our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah bless, protect, honor and compliment him, his family, his followers, companions and everyone that follows the way until the end of time. May Allah include us from amongst them. Allah, He reminds us throughout the Qur'an, believers have the taqwa of Allah. Put a shield, a wall, a barrier between you and the anger of Allah. That shield, that barrier is that we rush to fulfill the commandments of Allah and we stay away from His prohibitions. And then He says, do so the way Allah deserves and don't die, don't breathe your last breath except that you are submitting to Allah. And again, He reminds us, believers have the taqwa of Allah. Put a wall, a barrier between you and the fire of hell. Fulfill His commandments, stay away from His prohibitions and speak the truth. Whoever does these two things, Allah will fix your actions. Allah will forgive your mistakes. Whoever then truly obeys Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will have the true victory in this life and in the life to come. I want to ask everybody to start scooting up. We're going to have a lot of people today, so I'm going to ask from the very beginning. One of the things that Allah he tells us at, in the middle of Surah Baqarah, Allah he tells us وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ Allah he tells us that there are people from amongst people there are those who they set up and create and consider there to be equals or partners or things similar to Allah they put people on par with Allah and they love these things, they love these idols, they love these deities of theirs, like you, O Muslims, love your own God. They love their idols, like you love Allah. But then he adds one more thing, but, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ But believers, no, 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 they love Allah way more. They love Allah way, 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 way more. Just this past week, Allah had blessed me to go to do Umrah. I visited the lands of Mecca and al Madina, al Munawwara. May allow all of us to go there over and over and over and over again. And something that I, never ceases to amaze me is how much people love Allah. How much Muslims love Allah. How much they love this religion. How much they love the Quran. How much they love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this ayah sums up, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ You cannot compare the love a Muslim has for Allah compared to any other love on the face of this earth. You simply cannot do so. People will take idols and put them on par with Allah. People will take people and consider them gods beside Allah. People will take their money. People will take their degrees. People will take their cars. People will take their status, their job titles, whatever it is that they have in their life, that they love, that they adore, their fake idols, all of these things, they will put them on par with Allah and they will love them. They will desire them. They will covet them. They will worship them in one way or another. But the love a believer has for Allah, you cannot compare. You cannot compare. Because the love that a Muslim has for Allah is more full. It is more deep. It is more special. It is different, more special, more sweet, more powerful than any other love that exists on the face of this earth. Because a person who loves anything other than Allah, they're going to have fluctuations. You may have an idol, and guess what? One day you may find another idol. You may have an idol, and one day it doesn't give you what you want. You may desire all the wealth and money that you have. You adore and you worship the money that you have. You look at your bank account and go, hmm. 
But then you see somebody else with a little bit more money and you look away from your bank account, you look at their bank account. You may love the, st the status and power that you have. I am the CEO of this. I have this job title. But then you look over and you see somebody who has a better job who runs a better company. So, but Muslims have nothing better to look to. Because Allah, He is the most perfect. Allah, He is divine. Allah, there's nothing more special, nothing greater, nothing more important that a believer needs to go to, that a believer needs to love, that a believer needs to seek other than the one true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when you walk through the streets of Mecca and Medina, if you've gone, may Allah allow you to go again. If you haven't, may Allah invite you. You see people who are so poor. They barely have the clothes to put on their back. They don't even have a phone to, to book it, an appointment to get into the rawdah. Because they're so poor. And you see people who are the richest of the rich who own hotels there. But then when they put on their ihram, they walk into the masjid. And they look at the Kaaba for the first time. They're all the same. They're all pouring their eyes out. They're all crying tears, all sorts of tears, all sorts of emotions. They look at the Kaaba. We don't worship the Kaaba. The Kaaba is simply something that we face as a direction. It's a qibla, it's a direction, but it symbolizes something. And they're so overcome with love, they're so overcome with awe, because there's nothing greater than the love a Muslim has for Allah. And you see, the, the, they couldn't have made dua for 10 years, but all of a sudden, Allah, I need this, Allah, I need that, Allah, help me, oh Allah, you did this, oh Allah, you... Everything out of their heart just starts to come out. They couldn't have prayed for the past 20 years, their money could be so haram, they could be the worst person, but once they get there, the love that was embedded inside, the little seed of love for Allah, the la ilaha illallah in their heart, is now just blossoming. And the tears come, the duas come, the dhikr comes, the Qur'an comes, they're overwhelmed with love of Allah. This is tsunami of emotions that come. And you see them, you, you see them, especially if it's their first time, they walk around and, and they just want to touch everything. They just want to look at everything. They just want to feel the floor. The marble wasn't there a hundred years ago. These pillars weren't there a hundred years ago. The kiswa wasn't even there one year ago. The Kaaba, the bricks weren't even there a few hundred years ago. But it's not the place, it's not the material, it's not the construction, it's the place. This is Mecca al-Mukarrama. This is the honored, special city of Mecca. This is al-Masjid al-Haram. This is the special, sanctified masjid. This is Baytullah al-Muharram. This is the special, sanctified house of Allah. If I can let everybody to squeeze in as much as they can. The history, the reward of praying in these places, the revelation that came in these places, the prophets that walked these lands. It's overwhelming. This is the house of Allah. This is where Allah wants us to pray towards. This is where Allah revealed close out of the borders. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. This is where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi was born. They're overwhelmed with love. Their true colors come out. Oh Allah, I don't have anything. If they actually have nothing, they say, Allah, I have nothing. If they have all the money, they still say, oh Allah, I have nothing. Their humility, their servitude, their ubudiyah, their, their need, Allah, what am I in front of you? You have everything, Allah, I have nothing. And then you see these people, they walk into Al-Madina, Al-Munawwara. They walk into the illuminated city. They walk into the city of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And again, you see their eyes just fill with tears. This is where the Prophet ﷺ walked. This is where the Sahaba lived. This is where revelation came pouring down. This city has pieces of Jannah spread out throughout its lands. This is a special, special place. And again, they're overcome with emotion. They're overcome with awe. They're overcome with love. Again, the rich, the poor, the scholar, the layperson. 
Their iman just increases. They find a light in their relationship with Allah. Their love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah bless and protect him. Their hearts don't stop testifying, Allah, there's no God but you. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And, oh, and this man, Muhammad, he is your messenger. He is my prophet. He's my guide. He's my role model. And I'm in a city. And everybody... Big, small, scholar, not a scholar, their tongues just automatically say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. Oh Allah, bless and protect this man, honor this man. And yes, we can say salawat from here and an angel will take it and deliver it to him. So we don't need proximity to do so, but we like to do so. And you find people again wandering the streets of Medina. Some people, they... they, they how do you walk in the city that the Prophet ﷺ walked in? The city of the Muslims. Yeah, the Green Dome wasn't even there 200 years ago. It's not the Green Dome. It's the land. It's the place. It's the environment. It's the reward. It's the place. Revelation came down. It's the place that Iman retreats to. That faith itself retreats to. The virtues of the city are never ending. We get an Iman high. We're filled and overcome with love. And why is it that believers have so much love for Allah? Where is this overwhelming desire and passion and attachment to Allah? Well, why not? He's our God. He's our creator. He's our master. It's because He's eternal. He is forever. Everything else started at some point and didn't exist before. Everything else will end at some point and will cease to exist. Even if a loved one passes away, guess what? Sooner or later, their memory fades. Their cells fade. Their legacy fades. But Allah is everlasting. Allah he is the most perfect, the most beautiful, the most amazing. Everything else in creation has imperfections. It has blemishes. It has weaknesses. It has some issue. It has some thing that's not perfect. It has some thing... That isn't so great. And even if it is great, who gave it that greatness? Allah gave it that greatness. Allah gave it that beauty. Allah gave it that specialness. And our love for everything else can waver. It can go up and down. Nothing is consistent. We can love our parents, our children, our spouses. But they can leave this world. Their personality can change. Their hearts can change. Our best friends will come and go. But Allah is there forever. Allah is the one who's always accessible. Allah is the one that's the most reliable. And Allah is the one in control because He's the only one that can actually give me what I need. I can ask you for the simplest thing. Go outside, get a cup, get me a cup of water. You could drop dead before you make it to the door. How do I, can I really trust anyone other than Allah? I can ask you, give me one dollar. You can pull it out of your hand and before it gets into my hand, what happens? The breeze takes it away. You can send it to me digitally and Zell can break and the servers can go down. I can't trust anyone, anything the way I can trust Allah. Allah is the one who loves and cares the most. He loves believers more than anyone can. Allah loves the true Muslim more than the, that person's own mother loves them. Allah can show care and kindness with one drop of water more than all of humanity if humanity tried. If I, again, if I can have everybody scoot in as much as they can, try to fill up all the spaces that are in front of you. Even His name is so beautiful and so amazing. Just the name of Allah. That's why Allah says, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When Allah is mentioned, when people, when believers just hear the name, the word Allah, their hearts start to tremble. Because of this love, because of this iman, because of this unwavering faith in their heart. And Allah, He's not just Allah, but He's our Rabb. He tells us this in the first ayah, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ He's our Rabb, He's our Master, He's our Lord, He's our caretaker, the one that provides for us, the one that takes care of us, the one that nurtures us, the one that grows us. He is our, by extension of words, He's our Murabbi. He's the one that nurtures us, takes care of us, grows us. He's our Qayyim, He's our maintainer. He's the one that keeps us intact and whole. 
Our mothers try, but our mothers can't do it. Our fathers try, but they can only do so much. Doctors and everything in this world can only do so much. Allah is their true qayyim. He's our mun'im. He's the giver of gifts. He's the giver of blessings. And everything He gives us, no matter how big, no matter how small, is a ni'mah. It is a gift. It is a blessing. I didn't deserve any of it, yet He still chooses to give me? I didn't deserve one drop. I didn't deserve a hair on my face. And He still gave it to me. He still gave me that ni'mah. He still gave me that gift. He still gave me that blessing. I didn't deserve it. Yet he kept giving. He is the forgiver. He is ghafir. He is ghafoor. He is ghafar. He is afu. When I can, my sins pile high farther than the eye can see. Who's there to forgive without even thinking twice? Who's there to remove it all just because I said astaghfirullah? It is only Allah. He is the one that grants us entry into Jannah. Who else created Jannah other than Allah? Who else controls who gets inside of those gates other than Allah? Who else will give us his ridwan, his pleasure other than Allah? Who else can satisfy us more than our hearts can imagine other than Allah? Yes, the Prophet will, do, will intercede, he will do shafa'ah. But who gave him the status of Maqam Mahmud? Who allowed him to do shafa'ah? Who accepted his shafa'ah? It is only Allah that does so. It is only Allah that lets us in. It is only Allah that does all of these things for us. It is only Allah that will give us an eternity of bliss. It is only Him that can actually remove the sorrow from my heart. It is only Him that can remove the pain stuck in my heart. The cuts on my wrist don't remove that pain. It is Allah who removes that pain. Yes, we can get help. Yes, take medication. Yes, talk to people. Get that help. But it is Allah who's going to say, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. There's nothing else for you to fear anymore. There's nothing else for you to be sad over anymore. Once you get into His Jannah, and He's the one that will let you get into Jannah. Again, I, if I, I, there's a lot of people outside. Can we please scoot up as much as possible? It is Allah whose door is always open. I can go to Mecca, I can go to Medina, I can just wander around in the lands of Wahi, in the lands of revelation. All the while, the money I earned was wrong, my actions that I do were wrong, my character was wrong, I forgot to pray, I prayed late, I did this, I did that, and my life is filled with sins, my life is filled with mistakes, my life is filled with the disobedience of Allah. Yet not once did He stop me from eating a meal. I could have not come to the masjid for a month and every day of that month he gave me water. I could have not dressed appropriately yet every day he still gave me clothes. I could have been rude and mean and, 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 and been a jerk to his creation, to my spouse, my children, my parents. Yet he still gave me a family that cares for me. He still put a roof over my head. I can disobey him in every aspect of my life. And he's still there giving me another chance, giving me another chance, giving me another chance, giving me another chance, giving me another chance. There are people who lived a hundred years rejecting, hating, disrespecting Allah. And every single one of those days of their hundred year life, Allah still gave them air to breathe. Is there anyone like this? This is why This is why you cannot compare the love a believer has for Allah to any other love. The love we have for Allah, the love we grow in our heart every day, every Friday, every Ramadan, every Hajj, every Umrah, every waking moment of our lives is to love Allah more, is to obey Allah more, to learn about Allah more. So we turn back to Him. So we love Him. So we prioritize Him. Am I doing things that I like to do? Or am I doing things that He wants me to do? So our love... Our unwavering, uncontrollable love for Allah makes us prioritize Allah's wants, Allah's wishes, Allah's desires, Allah's commandments. And yes, we are weak. 
Yes, we are deficient. Yes, we're, we're not perfect. Only Allah is perfect. But we try to grow. We try to improve. We try to do what we can better and better and better. We're going to fall short. But we have to try and do what we can and Allah will fill in the rest. There's a sahabi who was caught drunk and was punished for drinking. And again was caught drunk and was punished for drinking. When he came back again, another sahabi, another companion responded, May Allah curse you, what's wrong with you? How many times are you going to keep coming? And the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تلعنو, Don't curse him. فَوَاللَّهِ مَا عَلِمْتُ أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ I swear to God, I know that this man loves Allah and his messenger. There is good in there. There is growth in there. There is a want to be better, a want to improve in there because there is a love of Allah. And the story we all know, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, When is the last day? Mata sa'a. When is the world going to end? When is the day of judgment going to happen? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ma a'adatta laha. What have you prepared for it? What have you done in preparation for it? And the man said, I haven't done extra prayers, extra fasts, extra charity, extra donations. Walakinni uhibbu Allah wa rasulah. But I love Allah and His Messenger. I do the basics, I do what I have to do, and I try to be better, but I'm weak. But I know I love Allah and His Messenger. And the Prophet ﷺ said, أَنْتَ مَعَ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتَ You will be with the one that you love. Our shortcomings are there, our weaknesses are there. But Allah is perfect, Allah is one, Allah is divine. Do what you need to do. Be the best you can be. Fuel the good person that you are with the love of Allah. Yes, we're going to have shortcomings. Yes, we're going to make mistakes. But grow every day. Increase in your love of Allah every single day. Learn about Him. Obey Him. Prioritize Him. Whenever there's that chance, whenever there's that fork in your life, do I do what I want to do? Or do I do what Allah wants me to do? You do what the one you love wants you to do. You do what the one you love wants you to do. That's why Imam al-Shafi'i in his famous poem, تَعَصِ الْإِلَاهَ وَأَنْتَ تُظْهِرُ حُبَّهُ هَذَا مَحَالٌ فِي الْقِيَاسِ بَدِيعُ لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَأَطَعْتَهُ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُطِيعُ you, you claim to love Allah, you disobey Allah, yet you're putting all of these colors and shows of loving Him. You disobey Allah, you disobey Allah. But you show that you love him? This is ridiculous, this is crazy. Nobody does this. Nobody disobeys somebody that they love. If your love for him was real, you would have obeyed him. A person is only obedient to the one that they love. We love Allah and Allah tells وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ We are those that love Allah the most. Back up that love with action. Back up that love with knowledge. Back up, the, back up that love with the obedience of Allah. May Allah make us from people that truly love Him, that truly obey Him. And at the end of the day, that effort, that, that struggle gives us His love in return. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا فإن الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد الله and his angels they bless and protect the prophets oh you believe ask Allah to bless and protect the prophet O Allah, we ask you to bless, protect, honor, and compliment our beloved Prophet, our Messenger, our Roma, our Muhammad, Rasulullah, his family, friends, companions, and everyone that follows the way until the end of time. 
ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا جنتك جنة الفردوس الأعلى بغير حساب ولا عذاب ما حبيبك ورسولك والله we ask you for the absolute best in this life the absolute best in the hereafter to enter us into your gardens of paradise and to protect us from the fire of hell اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم بدل سياتنا كلها حسنات اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا والله forgive us forgive our parents forgive our children forgive all of the believing men and women until the end of time اللهم انصر المسلمين وعليك بالظالمين اللهم انصر المسلمين وعليك بالظالمين اللهم انصر المسلمين وعليك بالظالمين والله give your help aid and support and victory to all of the Muslims struggling around the world in this country and any other the part of the world no Allah deal with their oppressors oh Allah deal with their oppressors oh Allah deal with their oppressors subhanallah bihamdihi subhanallah alazim subhanakallah bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk qim salah